Welcome to B&B RV. We're at 8101 East 40th Avenue in Denver. And our phone number is 303-322-6013. We're gonna walk around the 24F in our rental fleet today. It's a 24 footer with a full wall slide. We'll walk around the outside here and show you all the features. The first compartment that you get to on this one is your generator, but everything for the generator runs from inside. The second compartment is your electricity. So when you get to the campground, you're gonna take this plug, plug it in at the campground, and where you plug it in at the campground, there's also breakers there. You wanna make sure that that breaker is on or you still won't have power inside. So after you plug in, easiest way to check and make sure you have power is if the lights come on in the microwave, you have electricity. Most of the other parts of the RV are running off your batteries, not the electricity. When you're plugged into electricity, you are charging your batteries. This one has an outside shower. This is where you would hook up your hose for a city water connection if you're going to uh, remain hooked up to that pressure. And to fill the water is on the other side of the coach we'll see here in just a second. This is just a storage compartment for your um, propane. That propane, if you do need to fill it on your trip, is not a self-serve item. It's something they fill for you. Truck stops, campgrounds, U-Hauls, any place that does propane can fill that for you. This flips up. This is where you connect to cable if you have cable TV at, uh, at your campground site. This one has a large storage compartment. We include blocks for leveling. So these blocks have three levels. You're just gonna set this down and you're gonna drive up on it. So if your back is low, driver's side, whichever side is low, you're just gonna drive up on these blocks to get it level. There's a level inside on the dash. We'll see when we go in just to show you where you're level when you're parking. We include four camp chairs with every rental. You're gonna have a water hose that's specifically made for RVs for Pavo water and a coax cable for uh, cable TV if you're going to hook that up on your campground. This uses just regular unleaded fuel. The back compartment here in the bumper is where we store your sewer hose. So your sewer hose is just going to come out of this compartment completely. You're going to bring that hose up, you're going to hook it on right here and put it down into the drain. Pull this black lever straight out. That's your black tank, that's your toilet. Once that's done draining, close that black tank. Open the gray tank straight out. That's the soapy water from your sinks and showers. Let it kind of rinse your hose out for you. When everything's done, close it back up. Put your cap back on. Put your hose back into the bumper and put the cap back on the bumper. After you get done dumping your tanks, you want to go inside. There's little packets that come with it. You'll take one of the pouches out of the packet, put it in the toilet, and dump it down into the toilet. That keeps it from smelling and helps it biodegrade a little quicker. Comes with marine grade toilet paper for your use. If you do run out of that on your trip, you can just get that at Walmart or campground. We put a ladder on the back because we're going to check the roof every time it comes and goes but it's not really for access for the renters unless there's an emergency. It's not a patio. It's just for emergency use only. On this side of the RV, this first compartment in the back here is just another storage area for your use. All of these storage compartments have a little latch that will hold this up out of the way for you while you're getting in and out. This particular unit does have another valve here that you'll just leave open. That toilet comes into there and goes across and you just want to leave that open on your trip. This compartment is a no access compartment. And then this is another storage compartment for you. When you uh, want to refill your water, this is where you'll do that. Just pick this cap off, put your hose there and fill your tanks. So there's a gauge inside so you can keep track of how full your tank is. When this gets full, 
it'll just run back out here and overflow underneath if it uh, overflows once. That's another way you can tell that it's full when you're outside. If you're plugged into electricity or you have your generator on, <clears throat> you have two electrical outlets out here. If there's anything that you want to plug in on the outside underneath of your awning, this is your patio side. Has an electric awning. That switch is right inside the door. You do not want to leave that awning out unless you're here sitting under it. You don't want to leave the RV, leave that awning out. A gust of wind will come up and tear that off. So you want to make sure that you put that awning in anytime you're not sitting under it and using it. We can go inside now and check the inside of this coach out. Here we are inside of the 24F, this 24-foot Class C motorhome. This is all pretty standard Ford chassis. You have a button here for your heated mirrors, your external rear view mirrors, and your adjustments for your mirrors. On the um, gear shift, if you get into the mountains, as you get up, going up the mountain, it's going to slow down. At 40 to 45 miles an hour, it's going to shift down. When it shifts down, just push this tow haul button in and light will come up here on the dash saying tow haul. And just leave that light in going up the mountains. And especially coming down the mountain, leave that tow haul button on. That'll keep you from having to brake so much coming downhill. And if you're still going a little faster than you like coming downhill, just press your brake twice. It'll shift down for you. When you get all the way down to the mountain and you're ready to go, you just take that tow haul back off. And it uh, just goes back into normal operating. Your backup camera is built into your radio. Anytime you put this into reverse, it's going to uh, turn that reverse camera on. This also has side cameras, so if you put the blinker on, that camera will turn on for you. You can also go into the menu here and press camera to have that camera on while you're driving if you want to do that. There's a couple of outlets up here if you want to charge phones or whatever. You just don't want to put a big device, try to charge a big device. They're only about a 5 amp fuse and these outlets are connected to your car battery so you don't want to run that down but it's fine to uh, to use for charging phones etc. So you do have one car battery and two house batteries so everything in the house will run off the batteries with the exception of the air conditioner and the microwave which we'll explain with the generator. We also include a level in each unit so that you can make sure that you're pretty close to level. You're not going to be exact, but you want to be close. And you have to be level for the refrigerator for the fluids to circulate in that refrigerator so that it doesn't overheat and stop working. Up on top here, this piece flips over into this hole to become the bed and there's a ladder that hooks on and comes down to the floor for easier access up and out of the bed. There's a privacy curtain that velcros around to block off the cab area for privacy. We have a large TV. The DVD is mounted up here in the cabinet to work with this TV. So for the TV, the air conditioner, the microwave, and any other outlets that you want to use, you do have to have electricity. So you'd have to be plugged in electricity at the campground or run your generator. Your generator does um, run off the same tank as the engine. So once it gets down to a quarter tank of fuel, it's going to stop running so you can't run yourself out of fuel in a remote area. And all the controls for the generator and everything else in this unit are located right here. Let's take a look at these. This is your central control panel for this unit. Everything's run from this area. Your generator is right here. You simply hold down this start button until the generator starts and then let go. Once that starts, you'll have electricity. That can be run parked, driving, anytime you need that. If you're going out in the top heat of the summer, it's really hot out, that dash air conditioner isn't cooling it enough, go ahead and start this air conditioner and then go, um, sorry, start the generator to go start the air conditioner. And then shut that air conditioner off before you shut off the generator. All your gauges are here. You're going to have propane gauge, a battery gauge, 
We don't recommend you use that battery gauge as a judge. Uh, with a deep cycle battery, that's going to read good, 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 bad. It doesn't gradually go down so that you'll know. The only time that you'll have trouble keeping your batteries charged would be if you are dry camping, boondocking, you know, not plugging into services, not running your generator, not driving. Then you're wearing down your batteries over time and it'll take some time to charge those back up. Anytime you're plugged into electricity, anytime you're driving, and anytime the generator's on, you are charging those batteries. And so you have um, gauges here for your black tank and your gray tank as well. Those red lights will come up as it fills, and then when you go dump it, they'll go back off. The black tank just has little sensors into the tank that particles or toilet paper or things can hang up on those. So if you go dump that tank and you know you just dumped it, but it doesn't read empty, there's just particles hanging up on those sensors. We do include a, bu include a bucket in the bathroom. You could fill that up, dump it into the toilet, and sometimes that'll help rinse those sensors off too. It's not a big deal. They'll often dry out before they get there and so those lights will go back off, but it's an easy way to know that you just dumped it. They might not all be off. To slide out the slide, it's just extend and retract. You want to make sure your driver's seat is out of the way of this slide and there's no shoes or anything in behind the front of the slide. You want to just hold down that extend button until the slide is all the way out. You want the slide to be either all the way out or all the way in. So when you park, you get ready to slide that slide out. Just make sure there's nothing out beside you a post, a tree, a vehicle. Just make sure it's clear as you slide that out. This has a nice big deep slide, really opens up the coach a lot. We'll slide it all the way out. In the back, we'll show you in a second, that bed flips over to be an upgraded pillow top mattress for a queen bed. Once it hits the wall and it's all the way out, just let go of the button. The rest of the controls here uh, start with the tank heaters. The tank heaters are just used for winter use and only when you're plugged into electricity because they will run your batteries down very quickly. That's a pad on your heater, um, a heater pad on your tank for your wastewaters to help keep those from freezing down to a little lower temperature. And if you're going out in winter use, we'll explain all of that as well again. Water pump is here. Anytime that you want to have onboard water, you're going to turn on this pump. Shower, sink, toilet, any water on board. Your water heater has two options. If you um, have your generator on or you're plugged into electricity, you can use it on the electric, the 120 volt is how it's listed, or you can put it on LP gas for propane. So if you're not hooked up to electricity, you'll use it on propane, and if you are, you can use it on electricity. That's all the controls here. Down by the door, we do have a couple of more buttons. We've got a battery disconnect where this red light is. So that red light needs to be on 100% of the time you're out. That's used for storing the coach and disconnecting the battery. So make sure that stays on. These two lights are for lights, an inside light and an outside light to get in and out of the coach. There's a step light right down here at the step, also help you get in and out of the coach at night. There's an awning button, and that awning is just push the awning to go out, push it the other way to come back. Do not leave that awning out unless you're sitting under it. The wind, a gust of wind comes up, it'll tear those right off. So you wanna make sure that uh, that awning is in if you're not enjoying it sitting under it. This does have small stabilizer jacks on the back, but those jacks were just a little bit too light for this unit and uh, were causing more problems than they were helping, so we've disabled these jacks so you won't use these buttons at all. There is a little flip up for the counter here. This just flips up to give you more counter space as you're cooking. Our coaches are upgraded from front to back. One of the things is we have a big stainless steel sink. In the kitchen, all you have to do is be hooked up to water, have the water pump on, and you've got water. With the stove and the oven, the three burners on top 
I'll have this igniter, so you're just going to turn this to on, hit the igniter, and your flame will start. But for the oven, you're going to have to reach in to light that. So what you do is you turn your knob to pilot. While it's on pilot, you hold it in. While you're holding it in, you reach down and light that pilot light. It's a tiny little pilot light, and it takes a very long time. You swear that it's not working, it's not working, and then all of a sudden the light, and it doesn't poof at you, it's just a very small little flame. Let that burn for another 30 seconds or so, then you can release the pilot and turn it on to the temperature that you want. Microwave is just like home. One easy way to tell if your electricity is working is if you have lights on your microwave. When you start your generator or plug in electricity, you'll get some lights on your microwave. And that's an easy way to tell if the electricity is working in here. On this side of the coach, we have the dinette. This is called the Dream Dinette. It's, it's an upgrade as well. It's mounted to the wall so you don't have a leg in your way. And these four cushions are all removable. So there's a handle right underneath. You release this handle, push down on the table. It comes all the way down to these rails. And these four cushions go across to make a bed. When you're done, simply lift it back up, latch the latch. It's a very easy bed to use. In this cabinet, you have your DVD player as well as your antenna booster. So if you're going to watch broadcast TV, there's a very small button with a very small light right there. And you'll push that in for TV out for DVD or cable, and then go onto your TV and set the uh, source. You have to go into the menu, tell it you're on cable or you're on air, and have it search for channels so that it knows what channels it has in that area. And again, we put all this information in your manual, so as you get out there, you'll have a reference for that if you have questions. In this cabinet, we will have some matches or a lighter to help you light your stove, a fly swatter, we include a deck of our custom cards, and now we have written a manual. So this unit has a manual with it that covers everything in here. Any problem or any question you have is going to be in this manual for you while you're out. As we move to the back, we'll have the refrigerator. These are all automatic. They will run on propane and then they'll switch to electricity whenever you have electricity. So if you start the generator, plug into electricity, it's automatically going to switch. This model has a green light and an orange light. This orange light on the bottom is for gas. So when you're running on gas, you'll have an orange light. If, you're, if this orange light flashes, that's the only thing you have to watch for. When that orange light is flashing, turn it off, turn it back on, and it'll relight. When you plug into electricity, that orange light's going to go off and all you'll have is that green light. So just off and back on if you do see it flash. That's rare, but we want you to know so that it's not off for a long time. This one does have a lot of storage and pantry um, in the uh, kitchen area. In the bathroom, we've got the shower. There's a shower head that has an on and an off on the shower head. We include a bucket of cleaning supplies and a trash can. With the toilet, it has a pedal, so you're just going to press this pedal to flush, hold it part way down to add water to the bowl, all the way down to flush. In the cabinet here, we're going to include your chemical and your toilet paper. If you do need more paper than we have in here, get the RV and marine paper. You can get that at Walmart, at campgrounds, etc. You just don't want to use a real thick, heavy paper like you would use at home because it clogs up and gets into a ball and won't drain out. The packets are just a little pouch, so after you're done dumping outside, you come in, put the pouch in the toilet, flush it down, that'll keep it smelling fresher and help it biodegrade a little quicker.